welcome to the celebration of the Lord's Day on this 20, 20 what, 21st <laughs> Sunday after Pentecost. The order for the Holy Eucharist Rite 2 begins on page 355 or in the bulletins at your places. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Surely he has borne, for, borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Excuse me, I lost my place. <laughs> he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By the perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken from the transgressions of my people. They made his grave with the wicked, and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring, and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous, one of my servants, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death, and he was numbered with transgressions. Yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercessions for the transgressors. The word of the Lord.
reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf, to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as, those, as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him having been designated by God a high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it that you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one on your right hand, and one on your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, you do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, 
the cup that I drink, you will drink. And with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the 10 heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus said, to, Jesus called them and said to them, you know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant and whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave to all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. And then she turns the page, and in the next panel it reads, I hope nothing bad happens to him. And the little girl has turned the page again, and in the third panel, her little disappointed face is saying, oh boy. When we hear James and John asking to sit at Jesus' right and left hand in our gospel reading today, we hear it with like a pronounced sense of dramatic irony. Like, we know what's going to happen. We're not like the little girl. We're not like James and John. We know what happens in a few short chapters, and on its surface, oh boy, it is not going to look like what James and John expect glory to look like. I'm sure that Jesus getting crucified is actually not the success story that any of the disciples were hoping for when they joined up. The bad news for James and John is that we're going to read this story two millennia later and think that they're kind of boneheads for asking Jesus for the best seats in the kingdom. Because no joke, like right before, just right before, the verses right before our gospel reading today, Jesus for the third time is telling them, hey, I'm going to go to Jerusalem and be mocked and spat upon and flogged and crucified. This is the third time he's told them, I'm going to go to Jerusalem, be tortured and killed. And James and John, apparently being completely unable to read the room, come to him and say, um, Hey, Jesus, so we're going to ask you for something, but you have to say yes, okay? Like they're some devious children trying to trick him into something. And I can just imagine Jesus' reaction. Sighing deeply, closing his eyes, maybe pushing up his glasses a little, or running his fingers through his beard. What do you want me to do for you? And James and John ask, grant us the highest places of power in your coming kingdom. James and John want to be the most successful of the disciples. They want to see the view from the top. And it's actually good news for James and John that they are not going to get what they ask for here. God's vision for Jesus' work in the world is not nearly so myopic, not so short-sighted as that of James and John in today's reading. In the system that James and John envision, the kingdom inaugurated by Jesus would have a power structure shaped like a pyramid. Jesus at the top, James and John somewhere underneath him. Who really cares where everyone else is as long as you're James and John? The good news for James and John 
is that God's kingdom is infinitely more generous than some sort of hierarchy wherein they have to trick their way to the top position to be close to Jesus. God's kingdom isn't like the world around them. They don't have to climb and compete and curry favor to be successful disciples. God is far too generous for that kind of plan. Instead, Jesus reminds the disciples that in God's kingdom, that pyramid of prosperity, it's like turned upside down. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. In this 10th chapter of Mark's gospel that we've been reading for multiple Sundays now, Sunday by Sunday, we've heard a different vision that Jesus is offering to his disciples. To love is to keep the law. To be rich is to give it all away. To be successful is to serve. Jesus is inviting his disciples into creating a world turned right side up. And having seen what's on the next page, as it were, we can laugh at the wild misunderstanding that James and John have about the kingdom of God in Mark's gospel. But we still have to grapple with this whole, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first thing. As individual people and as a parish, I think we'd all pretty much prefer the same thing that James and John are asking for, if we're honest. Not to descend to greatness, as it were, but to be on top of the pile. It'd be attractive to have power, to have all the best stuff, to make the rules. Power, wealth, status, they're seductive because that's what we think will give us a sense of security. But I think that Mark's gospel begs of us this question. What does it look like for Christians to be successful? What does it look like for us to really flourish in this world? Have you ever heard the phrase, it's lonely at the top? What if it's lonely there because that's not the top? If I gain billions of dollars and I become fabulously well-connected and I have models on my arms at parties and lo, I end up amassing enough cash to be able to rocket myself into space for fun and for glory, who is beside me there? Who am I in community with anymore? God is far too generous for human flourishing to be limited to a few people at the top of a pyramid. That's why in God's kingdom, that pyramid is flipped upside down. Instead of a bunch of people climbing past, climbing over each other, it's a bunch of people reaching out and lifting each other up. That's where we're going to find true security. Human beings are designed by God. We're hardwired for connection. We're wired for belonging. We're wired to experience our utmost happiness, not when we live these lives of power and prestige and peak consumption, but when we live lives of purpose. And thank God that a life of purpose isn't tied to sitting in the top seats. It's tied to loving God and loving our neighbors. We find our deepest purpose, our deepest flourishing in sacrificial love and radical hospitality. And that's available to everybody. Equal access. The first shall be last and the last shall be first. Business author Tim Sanders was raised by his grandmother, Billy. And Billy wasn't exactly in the position to take on a child. She was living alone in a farm near Clovis. And Billy's husband, Larry, had done like a little too much gambling in town and had basically taken all of Billy's money and most of her reputation with him when he left. He was long gone by the time that Tim came to live with Billy on the farm. But Tim recalls that every morning, Billy would make a cup of coffee, and she'd sit down with her Bible and the newspaper. And she'd read the Bible, and she'd read the stories in the newspaper, and she'd pray for the people that she read about in those stories. And one morning, while Billy was praying, she looked up and saw a man walking through the wheat field toward the house. And Billy got up, and she met the man in the field. And Billy asked the stranger, Can I help you, sir? I pray so, ma'am, I pray so, he said. 
My name is Clarence, and I'm looking for a hot meal and a day's work. I've been walking for days from Dripping Springs, Oklahoma. I've just lost every penny I ever had in the swindle, and I'm trying to make it to Arizona where my kin are going to help me get a new start. I just need work, ma'am, just for today. And Billy looked at the man and said, well, we do have some work around here. I could do some help pruning the tops of the peach trees because I can't reach them and the barn could use a good cleaning. And if you'll work from now till sundown and you'll do those things, if you put in a good day's work, I'll pay you $10. Now this conversation made Tim a little nervous because he knew that they were poor. He knew that his grandma Billy only had about $20 for the rest of the month and here she was offering half of it to a stranger. But Clarence got to work and Tim followed him around curiously and Clarence worked at a decent pace but he wasn't very talkative in the morning. And around noon, Grandma Billy emerged from the house with lunch for everybody. It wasn't much, it was hot dogs and canned beans but there was plenty and Clarence absolutely wolfed it down. When Grandma Billy slipped out of earshot, Clarence dipped his head towards young Tim and said, son, your grandmother is an angel. It's people like her that make the world go round. In these last few days, I've had guns waved at me and dogs sicked on me. I really thought I was going to starve before somebody would give me a chance. But your grandmother did, and son, I want you to look at how happy she is. See? See how much joy she's carrying around with her? And after lunch, feeling energized, now having some calories in him, Clarence finished absolutely everything that Grandma Billy had asked him to do. He trimmed the trees, he had cleaned out the barn, he took out all the garbage and hauled it off. He even repainted all the trim on the barn as an added bonus. At the end of the day, Grandma Billy took a look around and smiled and said, Clarence, we agreed to $10 for a good day's work, but this, this was a great day's work. You deserve twice a good day's pay. And Tim watched his grandmother, Billy, give the stranger her last $20. After a tearful and grateful goodbye, Clarence walked toward the sunset, and Grandma Billy slipped her arm around Tim and said, Timothy, today is a special day for us. Today we are rich. Today we are rich. What does success in God's kingdom look like? It looks like radical, sacrificial hospitality. And I can't speak to how each of your personal lives impacts God's kingdom. That's something for you to meditate on. But I can speak to the life of this parish. And whatever it is that we might lack as a parish, we've got radical hospitality. Look what God and God's generosity has made here. The hands that are reaching out, not up, the people that you're welcoming, the connections that you're making, the lives that you're touching, the people who are changed. This is not a peak Sunday in the church calendar. It's just an average Sunday, but this is a special day for us. Today we are rich because it's Sunday and we're getting to see a glimpse of God's right-side-up kingdom. Today, we are rich. Amen. Bye. 
Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. We pray for those in positions of public trust, especially for Joe, our president, for John and Ted, our senators, and for Ronnie, our representative. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace, Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. For the ministers of this parish, including the Matheson, Lowe, Clevenger Schwind, Burge, Beggs, Davies, and Sawyer Terry families, for our parish staff, especially Kenda and Shannon, for our clergy, Chris, Courtney, Dave, Dee Dee, Jared, Joe, Mildred, Miriam, and Tammy. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Scott, our bishop, for all people in the Diocese of Northwest Texas, especially St. Matthews in Pampa, and their clergy, Mark and Charles, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, in your mercy, for our loved ones serving in the armed forces, including Trey, Brandon, Stephen, Arden, and Mark. Lord, in your mercy, comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. We pray especially for Robert Dameron, Denise Warren, Marin Emony, Billy Dees, Amy, Ray Payne, J.B. and the Brooks family, Billy Bob and Linda Brown, Connor Crafton Temple, Deacon Roseanne and Bill Smith, Bill Sutherland and family, John and Rose Martha Tyson, Rose Valdez, J.B. Vineyard, The Waters Family, Becky Weaver, Antoinette, Haley and Family, Jessica and Family, Luke, Mark, Peter, Philip, Nelia, Terry, and Carson, 
grandson of Mary McCormick. Lord, in your mercy, we commend to your mercy all who have died, including Rosa Linda, John Flackman, Georgia Ackerman, Tom Morris, Leon Swift, Lucy Burris Corkmus, E.W. Keesling, Eddie Mays, and David Grease, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray for all those who mourn, including the Mazza family, the Flathman family, the Ackerman family, the Morris family, the Swift family, the Burris and Corkmus families, the Kiesling family, the Mays family, the Grease and Heck families, that faith may be their consolation and eternal life their hope. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. God speaks. Thanks for your help. God speaks. Peace. 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 <laughs> Welcome to the celebration of the Lord's Day at St. Andrews. If you're celebrating a birthday or a wedding anniversary, will you come forward at this time?
prayers for you. All right. Are y'all ready to we'll pray together? Father, Father of generous fathers, we thank you for the gift of children. With each child, you refresh your covenant with our father Abraham. In each child, you confirm our call to be stewards of creation. We pray your blessing on each child here today. Teach them to find courage and to shun fear. Sharpen their eyes to see and work in your world. Loosen their tongues to speak words of love and reconciliation. Turn their faces in charity toward their neighbors and fill each one with confidence in your steadfast love. This we ask, blessed Father, in the name of your child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. All right, everybody can take a seat. I encourage you to flip over to page 18 in your bulletins this morning. Go through a few announcements. As we've been uh, announcing the past several Sundays, we're going to continue to do so. Just remind everyone and invite everyone. Uh, we are hosting this year our diocesan convention. It's going to be October 28th and 30th. It's going to kick off with a Celtic even song here in the name at 5.30 that Thursday evening, followed by a reception afterwards. And then uh, we have on Friday night uh, a diocesan dinner and dance at the Embassy Suites. And we have all the necessary links there if you are interested in being a part of attending any of those. Uh, as part of the Celtic Even song, we're going to have the bagpiper and these gonfalons. If you don't know what the gonfalon is, turn around and you can see the Scottish tartan on the pole there. That's called a gonfalon. And uh, the two dons in the very back, wave your hands, are the ones who lead that. And so I like to call them the donfalons. Um, <laughs> They do a great job organizing and leading that. And Harbor Window also is helping getting all this together. So if you'd like to participate in that Celtic Even song and process with one of the Gonfalons, Nick Ford is holding up the sign up sheet right there. It's on that side of the podium. You can go after the service and write your name in because we have plenty, plenty of those to process in and around. It's a really beautiful moment too. So I hope many of you sign up. Uh, pledge cards. For the 2022 calendar should be in your mailbox and if they're not let us know we can contact the office and you can get one you feel free to bring those at any point between now and our in gathering service which will be third, uh, sunday november 7th or you can bring it to our harvest event on wednesday the 10th and what that is it's going to be our second wednesday you notice we've been doing a second wednesday night event every month started with trucking and then we just had our october fest in this one, uh, it's going to be a harvest event, and in, in that we're just saying thank you. Uh, thank you for whatever uh, this pledge season provided us here at St. Andrews, whatever folks were able to give. It's just a big thank you party, but a part of it is going to be we're inviting local artisans and craftspeople to come up here and set up their booths, especially right before the holidays. It's a way for us to support local artisans and craftspeople. Uh, they're going to be selling their goods, whatever that might be. Uh, and you can participate in that. We're also going to have a silent auction of paintings in the parish hall. Uh, last but not least, and this is David Stidham's idea, I think it's a great idea, uh, we're going to have a first St. Andrew's annual chili cook-off. Okay? I thought I'd get a murmur in the crowd with that. So, if you want to put together a chili cook-off team, if it be you and your spouse or you and some friends, this would also be a great way to invite neighbors and friends and family who aren't a part of this and they just want to be a part of the Chili Cook-Off competition. we got to find some reasonably unbiased judges, uh, and, and we're going to work out to where uh, anybody can eat for free, but if you want to participate in the, the, the casting your votes, uh, that'll cost you something, but that's going to go toward a good cause, raising money for a ministry or a local nonprofit. We haven't decided what that's going to be yet, but that's what it's going to look like. So start spreading the word about that. Uh, last but not least, I want to thank everybody for coming out to Oktoberfest this past Wednesday night. What a great turnout. Uh, what a great participation. Uh, I was able to talk to several ministry leaders, and they felt really encouraged and affirmed. They had a lot of people sign up for their ministries. And uh, Geezer's Gone Wild was a great band. It was my first time to hear it, so I want to thank Tad Clay right there for hooking us up with them. And uh, just a great fun night, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. 
Um, I enjoyed most of the night. <laughs> it was a part of the night I didn't enjoy. Uh, the water balloon fight, uh, it was me against uh, what felt like thousands of children. Uh, I, I thought uh, my strategy would be, they're going to be zealous, I'm going to go in close, they're going to overthrow. Uh, that was a poor strategy. It did not work. I now know what General George Armstrong Custer felt like. It was my little big one. Just a lot of just beans to the face. My ears were ringing. And I, Edie Luter was the only one helping me. And I looked out at all your faces. And what were y'all doing? Taking pictures with your cell phones. <laughs> so when you come up to communion this morning, I'm going to take a picture of you and walk away. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. No, it, it was a great it was a great night. And I had fun even with that. And, and it was fun to uh, have the water balloon fun with the kids. And, and next year I'll call up my water balloon again. So. All right. Did I miss something? Oh. All Saints sign up. If there's someone, a loved one, uh, that is no longer with us that you want to be remembered and have their name shared on the necrology list during the prayers during All Saints Sunday, that sign up is on this side, correct? On both sides. It's on both sides. Okay. So after the service, if you want to have someone be remembered, sign up their names there. Okay. Okay. Walk in love as Christ first loved us and gave himself up for us an offering and sacrifice to God. <clears throat>
Lord, and, and of thine own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. And, and also with, with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right to give him God. thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be. The vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust and we turn against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. Therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those who in every generation who have looked to you in hope, to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of Mary, Ruth, and Mary, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Praise the Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit your Church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Gifts of 
for the people of God. the other pattern.
body of Christ to bread and Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as the living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.
Alleluia, alleluia. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord.